Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie, your intuitive reader, and today I am back with a different type of video. Today we are going to be talking about the spiritual as well as the biological process of cryonics. So the reason I decided to talk about this is because I recently, just yesterday actually, watched a documentary called Hope Frozen on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I recommend that you do, but I'll briefly describe what happens in it so you can see what we're talking about. So first of all, the process of cryonics is the process of freezing using liquid nitrogen the entire human body or just the head in hopes of future resurrection. So some people believe that in the future, possibly some decades from now, others hundreds of years, some even a thousand years from now, that we will be able to, with the new technology, resurrect somebody and bring them back after they have died. Now obviously there's a lot of controversy around this. Now the documentary, oh and I did want to mention, let me get the numbers right, these people are frozen at minus 196 degrees Celsius or minus 20, no minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's very cold and they're kept in these cylindrical metal containers um, they don't have to be plugged in or anything. There's no power supplied to them. They're simply, uh, the containers are filled with liquid nitrogen, which naturally is kept at that really, really cold, deep freeze. Now, in this documentary in Thailand, there was this couple who unfortunately lost their baby girl. She was two years old to a devastating form of brain cancer. The form of brain cancer in which she got was a form of brain cancer that had no survivability rates. Now, they, they didn't know she had this brain cancer until one day they, they went to go wake her up and she was in a coma. So over the next two months of her life, she underwent, or a few months, she underwent many rounds of radiation. You know, I think it was something like 10, or you no, know, it was 10 surgery, like 30 rounds of radiation, somewhere around there, it was a lot. The little girl, basically the last moments of her life were probably very uncomfortable and probably painful or at least just tiring right and it was very sad to see however the parents the guy was a scientist so he worked with molecular um, in molecular biology at the cellular level and he did studies with cells so he knew how they would work and everything but when she died he knew that he wanted to try to freeze her so that in the future she would have a chance at life. And the way that I saw that, there was a lot of, because I can see why they felt the way that they felt, okay? But the thing is, is that if she were to be frozen like she was, and then thawed out in the future, which we don't even know is, a, is going to happen, if she was able to be thawed out she would still have the brain cancer. And she would then have to live again with the brain cancer and then probably die again anyway unless they're able to cure the brain cancer. And then once she wakes up, she probably won't remember anything being a two-year-old and then she's gonna have no one. She's gonna have all these memories, not memories, but the parents put pictures, clothes, toys, videos they put the entire documentary with her so that when she wakes up she is going to see it again and then maybe remember them and honestly from a biological perspective it is a, there is a chance that this can happen although right now they they've done a successful experience experiment with a rabbit in that the rabbit was dead and they were able to resurrect the rabbit the, reb the, the rabbit's brain, but when they do this, this freezing, they have to dehydrate the brain. And in the process of rehydrating the brain, the functions of the brain work 100%. But the problem is, is that the synapses, the connections of the brain are destroyed and damaged. Therefore, currently, there is no way to preserve the memories and to preserve the personality of the person. Their brain would work like, you know, just the general mammalian functions of a brain, but the memories wouldn't work. It wouldn't, you know, so then in that case, there's no point. But they are hoping that in the future, it can happen. 
which we don't know. Not to mention the company that was in the documentary, Alcor, not to mention it's, if you want to know my honest opinion, I feel as if, I'm sure there are some people who really do hope to help these people, but I, I also think that they're kind of uh, taking advantage of people in a moment of grief because for the severed head just to be frozen. So this little girl from Thailand, she had to die. And then within an hour of dying, she had to be this first level of freezing. Then they had to transport her to the U.S. because they don't do that in Thailand to a private company where they complete and I won't share you all the details of that. You can watch the doc documentary Hope Frozen on Netflix. I'm not going to talk about any everything. But then they decided to just do the brain. So they sever the head and they just use the brain. Now that means that if she was resurrected again, she would have to have a new body and everything. But when I watched that... It, to me, it just it it showed me about honestly the inabil inability to let go. They visit her often and they pray and they mourn at the, the site in which she's frozen, and I could see why they. Honestly, it was upsetting, but anyway, I feel that a lot of these companies probably are taking advantage of people in grieving moments because just the head, what they did has a minimum cost of $80,000 just for the procedure. I'm sure there's costs involved in keeping, you know, keeping them there. And then if you want to do your whole body, it's at least $200,000, according to Alcor. Now, there's other companies that do that, but not many. Currently at Alcor, there are 141, at the point of the documentary, people there that have been frozen for years. Now, now I'm going to talk a little bit, though, about the spiritual part of it, okay? Which is more relating to my... To my channel so let's imagine let's imagine the girls let's say that souls are real which in this channel we believe that they are let's say okay if you guys have looked at Dolores Cannon Dolores Cannon believes that we have a soul contract in which our soul writes out per incarnation per lifetime what we want to happen to us she believes that we do have free will as well but she believes okay this is my death this is that Okay, now I believe that maybe some things are set out, but I believe that we do have a lot of free will. Now that little girl, her soul incarnated it into her body and then she got sick and then she died. When she died, it was her time to go. Her soul would have then went back to source energy in which she would then choose to incarnate again. Now, since she died, because she is technically still dead, her soul would have gone back and then if, for instance, she does get resurrected in the future, her soul will then be forced to go back into this particular body, at least in my opinion, because even if there is no soul and there is no metaphysical, tangible type soul, you could say that the soul is what makes up the memories and uh, the, the feelings and the memories and everything that you experience mentally makes up the soul. I feel as if that soul would then be pushed back into the, because she would have a different body, but she still has all those memories and that soul for that particular lifetime, in my opinion, would be forced back into that body and she didn't sign up for that. Do you know what I mean by that? Another being chose that path for her without her consent and that to me is upsetting because like we talk about on this channel death is a process of life death must happen biologically and spiritually for us and the thing is is i think that a lot of people don't i think that the parents did not want to let go of this poor child and I do believe that it was a selfish decision because if she is to wake up, some of the interview interviewers were saying she will have no one because most likely this is not going to happen in, in the next decades. I have a degree in biology and I can kind of see the science aspect of it. I'm not an expert, but I can see it's probably not going to happen in the next decades. It's If it happens, it's probably going to be in the next hundreds of years and then you have to keep that body all that time and make sure those people are doing it. And, and even if it were to happen, like I said, her brain, she would then have to be put into another body. And then there she is again. 
and maybe she wanted to go elsewhere. Maybe she wanted to have a different incarnation, but I feel like because that same brain with those same connections, if they were to work, I believe that her soul would go back to that body. And then in that body, she would then have to live again with the cancer, not have a family and be completely suffering and in pain again, unless they had, let's say that they did have a cure for that cancer. Then yes, she lives again, but she doesn't have anyone. Everybody that she was, her mother that she was born to, her father, her siblings, dead most likely. And I just don't understand why you'd want to do that. So I can see it from both perspectives, but the reason I'm talking about it today is because it's a recent, it's not a recent thing, cryonics. However, that documentary is recent. And I, it really struck me because it just showed me again humans, and I have felt this way for a long time, and heck, you know, hell, I still am a little afraid of death. I won't lie to you guys. Who isn't? I mean, there are some people who are not afraid of death. Most people have some sort of underlying fear of death or that they just don't like to think about it and they think it's not going to happen to them. I try every day to say, I am going to die. You are going to die. We are all going to die. And then, unless, you know, there's immortality, but the thing is, is immortality, we can go on a whole tangent about that. We biologically and spiritually, honestly, are not meant to be immortal. We're supposed to live multiple different lives spiritually. We're supposed to die. Our bodies are supposed to decay. And so that we leave room for the next person. Already, this might sound cynical, but already our world is overpopulated. We have an overpopulation of people, and it's just going to continue to grow exponentially as the years go on. And then let's say that people are immortal. We're not going to have enough resources. We're going to run out of physical space. It's it's a problem, and it upsets me that some of these companies are taking advantage of these people, taking their money, and letting them think, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, down the road. It's like maybe down the road, but it just doesn't make sense to me. The whole spiritually, biologically, it just goes to show the fear of death and the fear of, for one, like even if you wanted to do it for yourself, if you want to do it for yourself, I guess go ahead. But to do it to another individual who does not have consent, that's just too far. That's, she was ready to die. Unfortunately, she was young, but her soul was ready to depart and not to come back and to live again and to do. You just have to let some things happen and they just did not let go. Same with people that do it themselves. If they want to do it themselves, like I said, if you're watching this and you want to be frozen, I guess you don't go ahead. But think about think about life right now. Like instead of thinking about, okay, what's going to happen when I die, try to think about life right now because you have no certainty of what is going to happen when you die. You don't. And you have no certainty of if you'll wake up if you are frozen, but you do have certainty of right now, of this consciousness, right now. So instead of kind of just having this fear, think of death more as a transformation. And even if there is nothing after death, if there's absolutely nothing after death, you're not going to know anyway. No one will probably know anyway. And that's just part of life. You have to die so that another little girl can live years later. Um, now I see, like I said, she was two, so that's very upsetting for the family, and I can't even imagine losing a kid like that, losing anyone, but I mean, I don't have any children. If I decide to someday have children, that must be one of the most upsetting things is the loss of a child. But, you know, there is a point where you have to, I mean, she died in 2015, and this documentary was released in 2020. Five years have gone by. I'm never saying that they'll forget their child because they won't forget their child and they shouldn't forget their child. However, they then, may I mention, had another child just recently and named her the same name. So even if, I believe the girl's name was Eins or Eins or something like that, they named the next daughter Eins Eins, like two, two of her names. And the thing is, is how is that child going to feel? If she were... You know, once she gets older, she's going to be like, oh, what's my name? It's like, oh, it's this. And you had a sister and she's they don't really even believe that she's dead, per se. They just say that she's kind of paused and that she's frozen. She's frozen. and We're waiting for her to wake up. Almost makes her feel like a replacement. 
that's how I would feel if I found out that I had a sister who was frozen and I had the same name as her. It was like, let Ainz, or her name, i sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, let her go, let her go on her path, let her have freedom, because that's taking away her right to what she wants and what the universe wanted in a spiritual sense for her. That's taking it away because of selfish reasons, unfortunately. And I do feel for the parents, I mourn for the parents, but this is something that honestly, it, it struck me on a personal level and it upset me on a spiritual level for her soul and for the inability to let go, okay? I hope this interested you guys. Um, I just wanted to get that out there. If these types of videos do interest you, let me know and I will make some in the future and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.